Welcome to online MMCS 2020. This talk is about Cell 360, design and implementation of Salience University. I am Jihun Yu, a corresponding author of this paper, and we are the research group from SUNICO. So let's dive into the topic. So today's streaming service uses adaptive streaming. And adaptive streaming has been wild, has been commonly implemented. And 360 video contents demand much higher bandwidth. Basically, content server pre-compute different quality of the contents ahead and the users fetches content based on the quality, based on the network quality. When the network quality is okay, that fetches mid quality, network quality gets better, that fetches higher quality, network quality goes down, it fetches lower quality. Let's look at the uh, contents requirement of the 360 contents. The current network speed cannot catch up. For example, the 1K to 1K at I resolution is only equivalent to 240p in the, or in the general videos and requires 25 Mbps and 40, and 40 milliseconds or less latency. If you look at the content resolution, it is 4K and 30 FPS. If you want to experience HD quality, you require, your system requires 4K by 4K quality and, and it needs 300, 300 Mbps or less than 20 millisecond latency. So if you want to have 4K UHD quality, it needs 8K by 8K on the I and requires 2.35 gigabps and less than 10 millisecond network speed, 10 millisecond latency, which is unrealistic in common network environment. So we want to make streaming service on the wireless and common network services. So how we solve this in current approaches? There are two categories of approaches, is, which is tile-based encoding as only video MMC 17 and adaptive 360 in VR 17 and HEVC tile and ACM MM 16. And there are more tile-based encoding for 360 content. The different category is a geometry-based encoding. Pyramid encoding by the Facebook VR and navigatable 360 in ICC 17. The goal of these approaches are adaptively compressed content based on user's focus point. So where's a, where the user's focus provide high quality, where users are not focused, probably not focused, then provide a low quality, then save the quality, save the network bandwidth. So let's look at the tile-based encoding. So you basically divide the small, basically divide the AQ rectangular contents to the small cells and provides a higher quality, whereas users are looking at now. If the prediction matches, users can experience higher quality. If the users move within the buffer video chunk, users experience low quality of experience. So perfect prediction is not possible. And look at the geometry-based encoding. It basically, it first it converted to the cube map, and this cube map encoding saves 25 25% si of the content size and it can make the rectangular format therefore we can use we can effectively use in streaming service and we can further we can extremely convert it to the pyramid and which can save 80% of the content size therefore it provides much smaller content size so limitation of the geometry based encoding such as pyramid when prediction matches to movement, where users are looking at the face basis of the contents, users still find they can enjoy the higher quality of contents. If the users move within the buffer video chunk, users experience poor, poor quality. Since we have to use a streaming service, this is inevitable. Once again, perfect prediction is not possible. So let's look at the basic of the trade today's streaming service. The contents are uh, created based on the GOP, group of pictures. It basically two second, five second, and 10 second contents. As we can more and longer and longer, we can compress the higher with the codec like H.264, X.265. The compressed video chunk is actual size of the streamed network. As we can have a longer GOP, 
then we can compress higher, which means more efficient content, more efficient. So key challenges of the 360 video stream. So can we compress the video content as close as the pyramid encoding while satisfying users' QOE? And it can embrace unexpected users' head movement, therefore make GOP longer. This is key challenges. And this is our design, key design, we call the saliency map. We, we, we want to estimate saliency map on 360 contents. We started from equirectangular contents. As you can see, equirectangular contents has high distortion on contents itself. Therefore, it is hard to make precise saliency extraction, precise saliency map. On the cube map, there is discontinuity points, lines in it. Therefore, it results in poor salience extraction. If we do small section by face it by face it, then it has no understanding on the barrier, which, which also results in poor salience extraction. So this is an example of the uh, cube map based saliency. So we reassemble the content to the proper uh, visual context. Therefore, we can extract the content we can extract the salience map more precisely and accurately. So this is the system, Salience 360 system. We're starting from cube map. Cube map is encoded to the pyramid, and therefore we save the contents to 80%. And from the content, from the cube map, and we reassemble the contents to the bigger, uh, to the visual context, and we extract the salience patches then based on the network environment if the network state is good fetches more fetches more salient reason if not fetches less therefore it is this contents are streamed then client converted pyramid to the cube map and salience reasons based on its location and stitched to the cube map therefore where users where users are probably fixate so the salience pitches Salience patches will be there. Therefore, we can experience, the user can experience higher quality of the experience, high quality contents. This is the uh, playing video of the Salience 360. Let's pause in here. Let's look at the contents. So, reasons where users probably fixate, so something like a text. Let's look at the pyramid. It has a pixelized. It has it is pixelized on the right side, thanks to the uh, salient patches. It is full resolution. Look at the face of the the dancers. Look at the face of dancers. Cell is three sixty improved the quality of experience. So evaluation. How can you systematically evaluate users' perception quality, and how is it different to general video content? Second, how can you embrace unexpected head movement? And third, what are the benefits of the cell electricity? The cell electricity is effectively works on real users. So we're going to find out on this evaluation. The first start with the perception quality in 360 video context. HBS, human visual system, can only see a small section clearly and blow on peripheral. This is how your eyes are designed. In a 360 video context, immer immersive experience are intensified. This FOB, 90 degree of FOB, provide this is what system can render. FOL, this is what human can focus. So how we define the eight degree is well described in the paper. So we can, we can consult the paper for the details. So let's look at the PSNR comparison in various segment size. In FOV comparison, we have about uh, three to five dB improvement over the pyramid on the right side as people actually perceive in a perception quality. At FOL, we have a more than 20 dB improvement over the various segment sizes. So can we embrace the head movement? The pyramid, so this point is the center of the face faces where users are looking at the center. You have a freedom to move 30 degrees to the left and right, meaning you're still in the face spaces. As you go to the further and further to the back, the side to the back, your contents are gradually 
compressed. Therefore, the quality of the content of the PSNR scores are drops as we go to the side to the back. But as we have a saliency, thanks to this saliency patches, human PSNR scores are increased and stay high. Therefore, we can experience, users can experience a higher quality. On the right side, this is a snapshot of the uh, salience 360 with the 14 patches. So as you can see, until the 30 degree, it is same as a pyramid and it is same as cube. As it, the cube map stays 100 over 180 degree. The pyramid is drops because it uses high compression. And cell 360 doesn't drop definitely, but it maintains high quality. Therefore, users can experience higher quality. So what is the benefits of cell restriction? X-axis is bandwidth saving. As you go to the right and right, further right, it can save the more bandwidth, which is a good. And Y-axis, as you go to higher and higher, which is a better quality. So right top is the best optimal point. Let's look at equirectangular. Equirectangular is our reference. It has a zero, it has a zero network uh, saving, and compared to the EQ rectangular, cube map has about 25% network saving, bandwidth saving, and in experience, its experience is almost same. And the pyramid, the blue one, the bandwidth saving is about 75%. We save a lot of contents, but PSNR does stay very low because of side experience. But if you look at the pyramid on the FOB. Uh, it's been a little more network, but it's probably not that big. On the right side, however, FOL. Pyramid spend a little of the network, but it's satisfied that the quality is much better. But variance is high because it is a subjective study. On average, we have about 20 to 25 DV improvement. So is it is cell 360 is effective? So we compare the FOL and FOB and PSNR and VMAF. VMAF is Netflix's quality of experience measure metric. And the gap between red and blue is the improvement. So as you can see, cell 360 maintains about 20 to uh, 25. Uh, about 20 dB improvement in PSNR and about 25 score in BMAF. So in conclusion, Cellist 360 utilize characterization of the HBS, human visual system, and viewers exploring behavior in 360 VR contents. And Cellist 360 improve perception quality while reducing the content size to serve the streaming service on current network level. Thanks for listening. I'm accepting the question from now.